Welcome back everybody to the ABC Networking YouTube channel. My name is Dobias Veninger and this time I have a video for you which, which I think is pretty cool. And it's another video in this series of how can you make your wired switch as much as possible integrated with your wireless environment. So in this case is a lot of wireless environments are running a, a mobile controller and in that case you have an access point and the access point is tunneling all the traffic to the controller. That's, that's a great use case, you have a lot of control on your traffic, there is a lot of functionality on the controller. But, as always, not every use case fits for every other particular solution or something else. So there are two other solutions, is for example where you have the uh, instant access point solution uh, from Aruba, or you have for example something called local forwarding solution, and in that case you better be sure that all the VLANs and all the, let's say, network connectivity on the switch ports are configured correctly in order for the access point to forward the traffic in the right direction. In order to do that, I'm going to show you uh, something called device profiling, and I think that's a pretty cool feature for this kind of environment. So just a couple of notes in order to make sure that you understand what we're going to do. By default, device profiling feature is disabled. When you're enabling the device, the device profile support for a, div for a particular device type, and there is no device profile map, I'm going to show you this, but then it's good to understand that, that the device type default profile is used, and that is name is default AP profile. Another thing to understand about the default profile is that that profile cannot be modified. Well, it can be modified, but it cannot be deleted or uh, you can't change the name. Then another thing is when you are connecting a device type to a port and currently this feature is only supporting Aruba access point but what will happen is if you connect it the access points will boot up the switch will automatically identify the device type via LDP I will show you that in Wireshark and then it will automatically apply the configured port profile. When LDP information is aging out on that particular port, the device profile is removed. So it is a very dynamic process. Then, there is a maximum of four additional user-defined profiles um, that can be created on the switch. So I think these are important notes to mention before we start. So what we're going to do is, let me get your console, and here we have the console. I have a switch called ABCN Profile. Let me show you the running configuration here. So that's the host name. There's nothing special in here yet. There's a couple of VLANs and there's some SNMP created, but there's nothing around uh, device, device profiling because it is disabled by default. So let me show you um, some show commands already and show you the status. Nothing in there. Let me also show you the config. And you can see I already said that this is the default AP profile name and this is the default settings that are part of the profile and currently uh, it is disabled. So that's good. So what do we want to do? Of course we want to create our own profile. So what are we going to do? On port 15 of this switch I have an IAP205. Currently not connected so, um, but I will be able to connect it after we're going to do the configuration. And on port 33 I have an IAP215R uh, RW there. So these are the two IPs. So I have a 205 H and a 2150RW. Yeah, so let me go to configure a device profile. So let me get into the configuration mode of the switch and let me show you some of these commands. So what I'm first going to do, first we're going to create our own profile name instead of, and we don't want to use the default. So let's call it ABCN and let's go in there. And let's assign uh, Untec VLAN 10 to this port, and let's assign tech VLAN 30. Um, so I will explain a little bit later, but in the demo you will. I'm also going to configure uh, maximum power to this port of 22, and I'm also going to give it a, a certain uh, a critical PoE priority, So, which is, means it is a very, very important. So how can you see what kind of settings you can do? So let me show you this. <clears throat> name ABCN and a question mark 
you can see the different kind of settings you can be make part of your profile. So what will happen now is if my access point is booted on this port and has been recognized as an Aruba access point later on, it will be able it will be assigning a, a PoE power of 22 watt. Uh, it will get a PoE priority of critical. It will get an untagged VLAN of 10 and it will get a tech VLAN of 30 because that's what we configured. Okay, so let me show you this. Um, let me exit here and let me show you how this will show in the running config. You can see this is the profile we created. ABCN, untagged VLAN 10, tagged VLAN 30, PoE, maximum power of 22. Okay, so what I do now, I need to associate this profile to a certain device type. And I will show you this also. As, as said, this functionality currently only uh, supports a RUBA IP, so I need to select a RUBA IP. What you see here is I need to do associate, and I need to associate with the ABCN profile. Yeah? So that's being done. So now I have the uh, profile. So if I now show you the device profile config, you can see that we have two profiles. Still, we have the default profile, and we can only change the parameters in there, but not change the name or delete it. And we have an additional profile called ABCN, 22 watt, untag VLAN 10, tag VLAN 30, as seen here. And I associated this one uh, to the Aruba IP. And you can see that it's currently also disabled. So there's one step we need to do is we need to this uh, device profile type uh, Aruba IP and we need to enable it. So now if we go back to the config, we can see it is enabled. So let me save this. So that's being done. We created the profile, we associated the profile to a certain device type, and we enable it. So now, if I show you VLAN 30, for example, so as you can see, VLAN 30 doesn't have any port 15 or port 33 at the moment belonging to his, uh, uh, to his, to his part of his configuration. So uh, what I also want to do is I want to show you these, uh, this LDP device type. So I'm also going to set up a, a mirror port, a mirror port, and I'm going to forward uh, all my traffic to port 9 because that's where I'm connected with my laptop. And I'm only going to take interface 15 because uh, that's at least you see the packets, the LDP kits, all uh, for at least one AP. Both. Uh, and I'm going to assign that to mirror one. So that's being done. So I also configured that part. Um, what I also want to do is I also want to show you some debugging. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the destination of the debugging to this session. And I'm going to set the, the event debugging turn on. Okay, now I'm going to do this. Let's make it a little bit smaller so that you can, maybe I can take this a little bit smaller also, make this a little bit bigger again. I'm going to start and I'm only going to capture LDP packets here. Let me select the interfaces uh, and start. So now I'm going to connect port 15 and I'm also going to connect uh, port 33. So what you can see here is, hey, port 15, there is some, uh, it needs to do some PoE power there, uh, and also on port 33. Nothing happening now. We need to wait, give it a couple of, uh, of, uh, of minutes to wait now, because the access points need to boot, uh, and then I get back to you immediately. Okay, something is happening here. You can see some uh, virtual LAN is enabled and device profiling is, uh, is applied for a certain port on port 33. Then you can see it is more or less uh, toggling the VLANs uh, on and off here. So let's see if we can already see something in this. Uh, show device profile and show status. Hey, I can see that I have on port 33. I have a, and this is the applied device uh, profile. So what if I do show VLAN 30? And you can see that I have an assigned, uh, see this is assigned by device prolang. Uh, out of a sudden I have port 33 connected to this VLAN. And that is, um, that is assigned by the 
by the device pro uh, profile. So I can also do show VLAN and then port 33. I can see, hey, it is assigned in VLAN 10 and it is assigned in VLAN 30. So this way we can see more information. And now we can also see that port 15 is coming online. So let me open one of these, uh, let me stop this trace and open one of these uh, packets so that you can see what I mean, how it is recognizing. You can see here that they have um, a certain packet coming from, uh, from, from the Aruba access point. It's an LDP packet and part of the LDP packet you can see that there is a RubaNet uh, TLV and based on this TLV uh, the switch recognized that it is uh, uh, that it is uh, that it is uh, this particular that it is an Aruba access point and that's way how you can do the device profiling. So let's see okay port 15 is now also also added to the device profile so if we do show lamp 30 uh, show feed and 30 again we can see that we have two ports now assigned to this. So I think this is where you can be very dynamic, connecting access points in your infrastructure and always making sure they get the right configuration. So and uh, you can see the debugging. I showed you the LLDP packets. So let's take it uh, one step further. Let's also take, take a look at the uh, info and look at the remote devices. You can see that I have two remote devices. One is connected on port 15 and one is connected on port 33. So let's give it a little bit of, uh, um, let's have a little bit of more detail. If I do 15, you can see model 250A, you can see some additional information, and you can also see that on port 33. Um, and you can even see the requested power in there, so you can see a lot of information getting out there. So I think this is, uh, this is some great info and make it very dynamic. So what if uh, we have a running environment, for example, with IEPs, and we need to want to add a VLAN or we want to add a certain new wireless service, and we want to change this. Can we do this dynamically? So what are we going to do now is we're going to have, um, uh, and we're going to add a VLAN that is not existing. That's even more better. So you can see that we have VLAN 1, 10, 20, and 30 on the switch. So what are we going to the configuration mode again? And we're going to the device name uh, and that was ABCN to the profile and let's add VLAN 40 in there in the device profile. Let's see what's happening. You can see automatically uh, device profiles removed, new device profiles applied on this port 15 and you can see it's also doing that on uh, port 33. So let's see now what's happening if we show VLAN. Hey you can see we have automatically we have an additional VLAN uh, uh, created, and if we do show VLAN 40, you can see that port 15 and port uh, 33 are part of this. So this way, we can even dynamically or configure it, for example, with uh, Airwave or IMC, we can add uh, automatically VLANs to a certain device pro that doesn't even exist on the switch and that's servicing uh, our IAP or our local forwarding in a very dynamic fashion. And I think this is really, really creating a wired uh, infrastructure that is optimized for wireless environment. For the dynamic of wireless environment, for the service oriented of wireless environment. And I think this really, really makes it efficient. I hope you saw the details of the LDP packets, understand how the device profiling is working and how the switch is recognizing based on this LDP TLV coming from the Aruba access point and be able to configure. And also that you can do it in dynamic fashion with VLANs that are not existing on the, um, on, on the, on the switch, but still dynamically configure it when you adjust your device profiling. Hope you like it and hope to see you next time. If you liked the video, like it in the YouTube channel or give comments on the channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.